What's up, you guys? What's up? What's up? So you guys already know it's Real Talk Wednesday. I'm back to do another Real Talk, and I know this time I'm probably looking at the camera because I'm in my bathroom, and I'm going to use my iPhone. I just really honestly, let me tell y'all, I did not feel like, um, I just don't feel like taking my camera and bringing it in here. I just, that's just doing the most. So, you know, if the picture quality is not as the same as my regular camera, then I apologize, but you know. A girl got to do what she got to do. So I know I look crazy right now because I have no wig on. I'm not about to put on a wig today because tomorrow I decided I'm going to do some videos, okay? Some wig videos, some synthetic, and some human hair. So for today, I'm going to put on a head wrap because I don't, you know, I'm not even in the mood to put on any makeup, to be honest with you. I might just like somewhat do my hair but i'm not really about to do too much especially if i'm not really going to do any videos except for this real talk and y'all don't really need to see me made up you know y'all see me look like a piece of shit before you know so this is how i look on a on a non-makeup non-wig day you know what i'm saying and i know my hairline is like massively light like this portion of my head is so light from wearing the wigs and not getting any sunlight to it so it looks kind of freaky, but we're going to fix all of that. So anyway, you guys, um, I hope you guys had a great 4th um, of July. We had a good day. We had a good day. We went to this thing in Scottsdale. Um, it was all indoor, so it had, like, indoor rides. Like, not really rides like that, but th they were rides. Like, you know, those spinny things that spin kind of, like, high in the air, but not too high. There were, like, three of those, and there was a bunch of, bunch of inflatables. And there was supposed to be a petting zoo, but there wasn't any of that. Um, and, you know, you could buy your food and stuff. They had games and stuff like that. Um, and like I said, there was supposed to be a petting zoo. There was supposed to be... There was... Um, there was a bull riding contest because in in another portion of it, like in another part of it, there was like a, um, I guess you want to say like, it looked like a rodeo, so that might just have been what it was. Um, they had pony rides. They had, um, what else? They had people selling things, you know, um, like vendors, like clothing vendors. Like their prices was outrageous. I didn't buy anything, but you know, they also had a barbecue or you can eat buffet barbecue. So if you wanted to do that, it was $40 to get in, which gave you admission to all access to the inflatables, the games, um, and then the buffet, um, which was the buffet had burgers, like, you know, burgers, cheeseburgers, um, hot dogs, beef, hot, they were beef, hot dogs, um, potato salad. And I'm the type of person I don't be eating nobody's potato salad. Like black folk, we make good potato salad. I'm just saying. I ain't throwing no shade, but I'm just saying. I have tasted enough in my time to where I can say I don't really eat nobody's potato salad like that. Um, what else was there? They had potato salad, regular salad, watermelon, hot dogs, hamburgers, um, cupcakes, cake, ice cream, lemonade, iced tea. So this was a buffet. Like I said, it was $40. And it was pretty damn good. You could just eat as much as you wanted. And then, you know, at the end, it was the fireworks. So my grandson, he had, like, an amazing time. Tiki had, like, a really good time. And I was happy about that, you know, because he did start his little preschool and stuff So last week. So he really likes it because, you know, I felt like, you know, he needed to get out and hang out with, like, the little people, you know, the little people, the little people like him. And so he loves it. He's adjusted really well to it. So I took him to that. We took him to that. Um, he didn't want to get on the pony rides. I don't know why. Um, what else do we do? Um, and he, I think the, the best part for him was the end with the fireworks, which, you know, they all right. The music wasn't that great. But, you know, all in all, we had a really good time. You know, we should have just went to the free event at the ballpark because it was free rides, free inflatables, free admission, free parking. The only thing you have to do is pay for your food. So for $40 for five people, well, Tinky was free. So, you know what I'm saying? That's $160. So to me, it really wasn't worth that. You know what I mean? So, but, you know, all in all, it was a lot of fun. So next year, we'll try something else. Um, at somewhere else, because I like free shit. I don't know about y'all bitches, but I really like free shit. Hold on. Why is my daughter Nay bugging out? She just, oh my God, that's the reason why I had to tell you guys the whole. She's like, ma, ma. I'm thinking something happened to her. She's telling me that I got a package. It was from Amazon. It's a picture frame. 
and it's huge. So anyway, we had a great time. You know, I like free shit. Other than that, you know, Fourth of July was a hit. We had a good time. The next day, we we decided to cook our food, which was the burgers and stuff, because you know we didn't need to cook it for the Fourth of July. And other than that, let's see, what have I been up to? So a girl started back working out, okay? Because listen, I have been slacking. I gained ten fucking pounds, and. I don't know if y'all can see it, but y'all don't have to because I don't really want y'all to see it. But I know I see it, and it's not really 10 pounds, okay? I know I be bitching, like, a lot about my weight, but, you know, yesterday I was in tears. I cried about it because I, I got on a scale yesterday morning, and it said 203, so that was 10 pounds. That was fucking 11 pounds. This was yesterday morning, and I just started crying because the day, like, not the day, but... I want to say, like, five days before that, I was, like, 197. So, like, how the fuck? I don't barely eat, but eat, not eating is not going to help your, your weight loss. And I know that because I have been through this already, and that's the reason why I lost so much weight is I started eating healthy and working out and, like, eating at the right time. So I stopped doing that when my husband came home, only because, you know, I haven't listened. I haven't had anybody to lay in bed with and eat snacks with or have sex with and then afterwards go eat snacks i haven't had that so you know this is like that's not new to me but i'm happy so my face is a little bit more filled in now because i'm happy and but at the same token yesterday when i seen that i was back in the 200 i i broke down in tears and cried and my husband you know he he's such a great person to me and he's so supportive and loving and i really appreciate that with him because you know everyone needs someone that's in their corner or basically is going to hold them down and give them the motivation and give them that positive spirit when they need it most. Like, you know, some people could have just been like, girl, you look fine. Stop crying. You know, but he's not like that. And when he came home, he helped me. We started our workout regimen together and whatever he does, I do. So he helps me with my weight loss. And that's how I lost weight. Like, um, a like years ago by going to the gym with him and him showing me what to do. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going yeah, to just go with the flow with him, with the workout, and I'm going to do it. But let me tell y'all, yesterday, killed the bitch. I said to him last night, you tried to kill me. You tried to kill me. But it, it wasn't even that bad. But, you know, when you haven't done something in months, because, you know, I used to get up every day and work out. And so I stopped in March and or April, in April. So I got lazy. And when I get lazy, my legs start hurting, my knees start hurting. And that's the reason why I started working out is because I got tired of going and getting those cortisone shots in my knees, which didn't even help after like the second to third shot. So, you know, I still was in pain. My knees were still flamed. So I decided on my own that it was time for me to get off my ass and do something about it. And, you know, working out, going for walks every day, it really did help me. It strengthened my cartilage. But, you know, it has gotten brutally hot out here, and that has limited me to going for my walks. Even at night, it'd be like 104. And let me tell y'all, even though it's dry heat, that shit is hot. It'd be motherfucking hot. So I kind of, like, stopped walking, and I, I could feel it. I, like, feel it in my knees knees, which is not the best thing in the world. But listen, I'm back on it. And, you know, I struggled for a long time with weight, like not even, how did I fucking used to do this? Um, not even really struggled, but let me tell y'all. I did kind of struggle and I think it's like a motivational thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I don't have anybody to work out with me or talk to me or just kind of like motivate me and follow behind them somewhat when it comes to working out, then it doesn't, for $20, right? It doesn't really, it's not that it doesn't help me, but it doesn't help me. I just feel like, damn, I'm, I want to hurry up and get this over with. You know what I'm saying? You ever go to the gym and you, you, you want to be there, but you just want the time to hurry up and go because you just don't want to do the shit, but you know you want, you want to do the shit, but you just wish that you could just, there was an easier way to get over the shit. Well, if you know what I'm talking about, this is what the fuck I mean. And so even though I would work out in my home by myself, I still would feel that way. Like, so it dropped from like 45 minutes to 30 minutes of a workout with me on my own at home. And, you know, I did gain some of the weight back. And then I started eating stuff that I really didn't, like, need. Like, 
I got makeup all on, whatever. Not even gonna see that part. Foundation. This is one of my favorite scars. Um, so it was like, you know, it was time for me to get back in the gear of things. And I'll tell you what, bitches, I feel that shit today for sure. Like, I feel the workout. And I'm happy that I feel it because if I don't feel the pain, then I just feel like it ain't it ain't working. Like I didn't do shit. And I wanna feel like I I'm doing it. You know what I'm saying? So back into the groove of that. Um other than that, really nothing is nothing really is going on in my life. Um my son Jalen, he he's twenty one, you know, he has a he has a new job. He does palettes, you know, not makeup palettes. So if y'all like, oh, let me get a discount. Not that type of palette, you know, like the type of palettes that deliver stuff for stores. So he does that, which is really close by my home, which I'm happy about. So and his friend works with him, so they get a ride together, they go home come home together. So he works five days a week, well it was six. But anyway, so he gets off at twelve thirty. Um, and that's good for him. Um other than that, he will be having to go in and serve time. Yeah, my son is going to jail, so he's going to be sentenced July 24th. Um, and I'm going to miss him dearly, but it's just, you know, let me tell y'all. You know when you try to tell your kids something, you you don't try, you do. And you just constantly tell them something for their own good over and over and over again the same thing or whatever. And it's like, they kind of like, not shun you, but kind of like, if they don't like dub you, but they listen, but they don't listen, listen. If I keep telling you something for your own good and you don't listen, these are the things that you have to deal with. And so six months is not a long time, but it is a long time for somewhere that you have to sit and not do anything. But it also is a long time when you could have avoided the bullshit that you can put yourself in. And, you know, guys, I have said this to you in the past about, you know, he need to stop it. I got to go to court for him. He need to behave. He's on probation. You know what I'm saying? Shit like that. But I think when they're young, I think they feel like they know every fucking thing. Let me tell y'all. At my age, I don't even know everything, okay? I don't even know everything. I would like to say that I do, but I don't. And nobody knows everything. But when someone tells you something that's had some experience, especially if it's something for your own good, then doesn't mean that I know everything. It just basically means, listen, take my advice sometimes. I wouldn't be telling you this for nothing. I got other things that I could be doing besides talking about the same bullshit over and over and over again. But you don't want to listen, and now you're going to have to pay the piper. Point back, period. You're going to you're gonna have to pay the piper. You know, and it is what it is. And I'm a missing the death, but I hope for, for this, I hope this experience that he's going to have to endure, I hope that it teaches him a lesson. And I hope within that time frame that he is able to think because being somewhere for six months, I would hope that you think about what you've done and all the things that you've done and haven't done with your life. You know what I'm saying? And hopefully when you get out, you don't be on the same fucking foolish shit again. Because if you are, you're going to just end up right back where you left. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I've been up to. And, you know, that's what I'm facing. Not that I'm facing it, but I am facing it. Because even though I'm not going to be the one sitting in there, you know, I'm going to have to be the one to go visit me and my husband. We're going to have to go visit him. Of course, we don't have to, but I'm going to. You know what I'm saying? Of course, I'm going to make sure that, you know, he have money on his commissary and shit like that. But let's not get out of hand with it because, let me tell y'all, I won't have to put no money on your books if you wasn't in there and you just listened to what I told you to do. So, with that being said, we're not going to get carried away with the commissary and, oh, I need this and I need that because... This is the real world. If you didn't have me, you'd have to fend for yourself. And like I said, had you listened to what I said, then we wouldn't be in this predicament. So, you know. At least I'll get my bail money back, okay? <laughs> but that's not even the part of it. It's the part that, you know, when someone tells you to do something, do it. Listen, especially if it's for your own good and it's keeping out, keeping you out of harm's way. Take it into some consideration that the person that's talking to you might be just telling you something because they care or it's for your own fucking good 
or maybe because they've experienced this before life. Now, granted, I have been to jail. Y'all know that. It was only two weeks, but let me tell y'all bitches, two weeks is long enough time for me. Like, seriously, long enough time for me. And it wasn't for, like, no crime. Well, I mean, of course it was a crime, but, you know, it was for assault. I went to jail for assault. They basically put it as attempted murder. I think they was dragging it with that part. Like, seriously, come on now. So you got some staples in your head. No big deal. You still lived. It wasn't even that bad. But it was two weeks. Two weeks out of my life that I'll never get back. But those two weeks also taught me a large, huge lesson. Bitch, control your motherfucking temper, okay? I have learned that over the years. And I think when you get older and you get more mature, um, you're just able to be able to pick and choose what type of positive and negative you want in your life. And me, I'm not with any of the negative shit. I, I really don't want any kind of negativity around me. I don't want to deal with any type of bullshit. You know, granted, there's bullshit on a daily basis, but I'm not really trying to deal with any hardship and deal with bullshit from anyone. I really don't care who it is because if you want to come to me and bring me bullshit and negativity and drama, I'm just going to block you. When I say block you, that means I'm going to block you as a person. You know what I'm saying? Like, it ain't got nothing to do with no phone, no social media. Bitch, I'm going to block you out of my life, meaning I'm not fucking with you. I'm not going to fuck with you. I'm not going to deal with you. I'm just going to carry on, and I'm going to block you. If I see you in the street, I don't see you. You know what I'm saying? I have realized, like... I don't have time to be yelling and arguing with people because, listen, I'm not about to be out here embarrassing my motherfucking self, looking stupid for nobody, okay? And on top of that, I'm a grown-ass woman. I'm 45 years old. Life is too fucking short. I tell y'all that all the time. I'm not the one for drama. You know what I'm saying? I'm not the one for heat. I don't start trouble. I don't start drama. I just like to live my life, like, peacefully. And, you know what I'm saying? Just enjoy the shit. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got much longer in life to live. Like, I'm I'm, I'm half of a hundred damn near. You know what I'm saying? So I'm trying to enjoy every bit of my life, every little bit. You know what I'm saying? Regardless of what it is, the littlest things in life, you have to learn to enjoy. I don't really like how this came out. You know what I'm saying? You have to enjoy the littlest things in life. And for me, that is non-drama and seeing my kids basically flourish and do the right thing. And with that being said, that makes me happy. Oh, so hopefully I remember to post this at the end of the video because, you know, I'll be forgetting shit. But at the end of this video, make sure y'all watch the whole entire motherfucking Real Talk. There will be a music video. This is an exclusive music video. Well, I don't know why everybody uses exclusive, but anyway. So y'all know my son, Shumpo, Hollywood Shumpo. He lives in New York. He's my oldest, my eldest kid. He's the one with the two sons, my two grandsons. So... He, um, you know, he's been opening up because he's a rap. I think that's what you guys call it now, rappers. Well, I don't know, but I call him a rapper, okay? An artist, maybe an artist sounds better, okay? Uh, so he's a music artist. I guess that would sound better. Um, I just put these lashes on today, so excuse the black stuff in my hand. That's the glue. But um, so he's an artist, and he just got, um, and, you know, he opens up. He's opened up for Waka Flocka, Fetty Wap, um, some other, uh, you know, highly known celebrity artists, rappers, but I don't listen to that kind of music, so I can't, you know, don't get me to lying and remember names because, like I said, I don't really listen to that type of music. I don't know what type of music y'all want to call it these days, but let me tell y'all, the music these days be like, whoo, child, a little bit much for a girl, but, you know, to each his own. Everybody is entitled to their taste. I'm old school. I don't really like, they call it trap music. I don't know what the fuck trap music is but it's all headache music to me i mean like i know what trap music is and like i don't understand why the fuck they call it that is what i mean like why do you call it trap music is it trapped in your fucking head i don't know i don't i don't i don't know but either way i don't really care for it you know what i'm saying that shit is like ridiculous the shit that people come out with for songs, like, God damn, y'all motherfuckers could just rap about anything. I'm going to rap about putting on wigs and, and looking good. Like, just I'm going to put on, I'm going to just rap about putting on a wig. And I hope y'all buy the CD or the, or, or what do you guys call it, the epi or whatever. I don't know. The single back in my day was called single, but I hope y'all just buy that shit. When I, when I put out this new video of putting on a wig, my, 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 my rap video. 
I'm thinking about it. I gotta, I gotta sit down and like, you know, see how my bars and my flow come. But anyway, we're going to get into this real talk real quick. But like I was saying, at the end of this video will be a new music video by my son. Um, it is um, on my YouTube channel as its own because um, I've downloaded it and re-uploaded. So I apologize for the quality of it because it wasn't that great, the quality. I guess it has to do with downloading and re-uploading. But anyway, so, yeah. Make sure you watch it at the end of this video. I don't know if I'm going to put it after this as an insertion. Maybe I will. I don't know. We'll see. If it's not right after this part, like, you know, before the commercial break or whatever, then it'll be at the end. Either way, make sure you watch it. Don't fucking fast forward it. And like I wrote on my last video, not every thing is for everybody. You know what I'm saying? I'm all about showing support and love, okay? So not everything is for everybody. And like I just fucking told y'all. I'm not into this type of music, but that's my son, and I support him. And if it was y'all bitches, and I didn't like the song, or I wasn't into that type of music, I'm still going to support you because you worked hard for that shit. So, like I said, I'd appreciate it. Don't be disrespectful to my shit. Now, this is the me coming out, the, the mama the mama bear coming up. Don't be disrespectful to my son's shit on some real shit because I don't like disrespectful ass people. I, I really don't care for disrespectful shit and it's not for everybody. Some, some shit ain't for everybody. That's just how it is in the real world. But disrespect, that shit ain't for nobody, okay? So if you don't like it, you just don't motherfucking like it, okay? You can fast forward through the part. I don't give two fucks, but don't be disrespectful, okay? Because I've had this in the past when I posted his video, and some females be like, oh, he's talking about, he's calling us bitches, okay, or whatever, and he ain't the first motherfucker to call you a bitch, and he's not even really talking to you. It's a song. Stop analyzing it so fucking much and get into your feelings. Bitch, you don't even know him. You might wish you did, but you don't even fucking know him. So don't take the song personal because it ain't even about you it's just a song point blank period so on that note let's get into this real talk okay mm -hmm. <laughs> i would do uh let's see right now oh Difference. All what? the snakes in the hood, but he oh. still let the mice get him. Oh, no, 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 no. This ratting at an all time high. I never told. I bet they can't quote that line. No. I'm a savage. No. Randy, what? you want to be what? down. Be, Randy, be, still be, playing be. with black candy. I dare you to front, bitch. Oh, no. Everybody either popping perks or popping zizz. I was on Grant oh. selling Hamilton's, nigga. What? Go ahead. Cross the border, swim to Canada, nigga. I'm from C and E, first 48, and for like A and E, the sidewalks are there for a reason. Pussy don't play the streets of Hollywood, but I still let it bam on you. Ever had beef with a nigga and it jammed on your back? The niggas pussy the ass like she dropped. Niggas straight trash. New V doing the dash. Hey, no pop in your bag. Fighting with demons. Miami we heating. No, we not breathing. Hey, dash your thotty. She on my meat. Watch me creeping. Hey, they hate I peeping. Niggas get mad, we bother the season. Hey, they hate I peeping. Niggas get mad, they buffing the reason. Two, three, think I'm joining her, checking her mouth, I'm getting like orbit. Uh, we don't show no love to thotties, my nigga. Uh, that important. Uh, in my pocket, she be enormous. Uh, then the niggas never snoring. Uh, they don't taste all these guap. Uh, they don't taste all these bands. Uh, they your bitch, she a fan. Uh, follow me on the ground. Uh, you don't show up on the man. Uh, you don't show up on the man. Huh? 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 <laughs> 
All right, you guys. Hey, Miss April. I will change my name to Priscilla. First, I want to say I love your videos and I hope all is well with you. This may be a long post. I'm 21 years old and I feel like I've lived the lifespan of a 50-year-old in just a short amount of time. I lost my mother in 2015, my son through miscarriage in 2017, and my grandmother last year. I went through emotional and verbal abuse my whole, fa my whole life with family. But every time I speak about it, everyone is still stuck on the family fairy tales and think, oh, your family loves you. Suck it up. The stuff I've went through with my family has made me feel like I'm worthless, stupid, and a nobody. I had a few I had a few suicidal attempts a few years ago and have been depressed. If you could see what I went through physically, I would look like Emmett Till. I honestly didn't get to grow up because all my life I've been sticking up for myself. I'll be honest, I didn't always have the best ways of retaliating. In middle school and high school, I talked to no one except maybe a couple of people that weren't but they weren't my friends. Although I often wonder why nobody didn't approach me, some say I had the face like I was going to kill someone. I was very quiet, but was nice despite the things that was going on at home and in my life. This is my second problem. I think I am very unattractive and retarded or slow looking. Why is it so hard to believe ugly people get treated wrong? And I have a baby face at that. I've had confidence, is, um, I had confidence part of, I had confidence part of 2016, but I still got treated the same. Oh, she said, I had I had some confidence part of 2016, is what she's wanted to say, but I still got treated the same. I got called slow twice in my life, and I started to believe it. And so I took it as, a, so, and then, I was, uh, okay, so I started to believe it. So I took an IQ test this past January at this center. My score was 95, and the people said they saw no signs of anything wrong, but it is the fact from all of the stuff that I've been through, this is what causes me to act the way I do, like having trust issues. I have no friends at all, and nobody hits me up ever. I always initiate my conversations. The common denominator is me. I have no choice but to believe it's the way I look because it can't be my personality. Well, most people never held a conversation with me. I am a nice person, but I do have a resting bitch face. But I know people who look more snobby. I know people who look more snobbier than me and get friends and have friends. I start seeking validation other places like having boyfriends until they were no good. I've been single for three years, but I haven't been celibate. I seek validation in social media. I only get a few likes and people think I'm so beautiful. Why is my inbox dry? Even the creeps don't hit me up. I know you're thinking, is this girl out of her mind? I think it's crazy too, but is it hard to train my mind to not worry about things like that? I try to tell myself that the things I went through with the family issues will help other people get through it, but I can't help anyone until I overcome it. But it hurts like hell having no family that loves you. I wrote over 50 pages explaining what happened to me to show people in the future what I have conquered. I've never been in slow classes. I was born two months early because my mother was a drug addict. I wonder, does that have anything to do with anything that I may be thinking or feeling? I'm thinking of getting facial surgery, but the only thing is stopping me is no finances. I feel like I've had a hard time explaining things in full details. I've had bad and good memories. I feel like I'm a social awkward, but I do love holding deep conversations depending on the subject. How do you feel about this? I need some help. I'm sorry if I'm talking all over the place. Is it still some other things? It is still some other things I need to talk about, but I'm, I'll just write another Real Talk email. I didn't want to make an extra very long post, so I'll wait till the next time. Thank you very much. P.S. I've attached some pictures of me. The last one is what I look like a lot of times. So, first of all, let me just tell you this. You are far from ugly, my dear. You need to cut it out, okay? The resting bitch face, who don't have the resting bitch face, okay? Second of all, you have to work on self-esteem, honey. Self-esteem is the number one key. OK, now I'm going to tell you something. She worked the hell out of this purple eyeshadow. OK, matches her purple wig. She worked the hell out of this purple eyeshadow. I just can't fuck with the colors. I can't get them right. But 
She has some big, pretty eyes. Okay. And you know what I really like the most about her entire look is her lips. No, I'm not gay, but she has some really pretty full lips. What black woman don't, what woman don't want full lips? Bitches go around getting injections just to have full lips. But yeah, I see nothing wrong at all with anything. The only thing that I'm going to make a criticism about, and this is just me, has nothing to do with your face because you actually have a beautiful face. And trust me, you have a beautiful face. She does have a baby face, but she's only 21. So you're a baby still. And you're just a baby. You're just a baby still. 21 years old, honey, you're a baby. What do you expect? You haven't lived life yet. So what are you so uptight about? But I will give you one constructive criticism. And that's just me because I do this for anyone. Girl, pick a nicer wig that will suit you. Okay? So the wig that you have on, the purple and black one, it's very wiggy. Very, very wiggy. And it's taking away from your beauty. Okay? It just, it, it just looks like it's a wig or a hat, a hat made of hair sitting on top of your head. The part is so thick, you don't see it. It's just not a good synthetic wig. And I know we like the styles, we love the colors, we like the flamboyance sometimes, but some things just ain't for everybody. But if you want to do a purple wig, that's fine. You could wear color. But I think that, for one, you're really pretty. Your makeup is bomb as fuck, okay? That I will give her. She's very pretty. Excuse me. She's very pretty. She does a really well, well, really good job with her makeup. I like her makeup in general. I wish I could show you guys, but she does a really good job with her makeup. The only thing that's clashing is the wig, and it just looks like someone threw it on her head, and that's it. Now, don't take it offensive. I'm just giving you some criticism, so that way you will feel a little bit better about yourself. You'll be able to push forward. Let me tell you something. I think she said her name was Priscilla. A lot of times people feel like they social butterflies. A lot of times people feel like they socially awkward. I'm going to tell you this much. I feel like I'm socially awkward. I do well talking to you guys like this. And even in person, I'm good too. Um, the one thing, though, that just irks me sometimes when I meet people is the fact is that they be like, oh, my God, you're like a celebrity. Or, oh, my God, you're a celebrity me. I'm not a celebrity. I'm just April. I could be your friend if you let me. I could be your, you know what I'm saying, associate. I could be your friend. We could talk. I'm not a celebrity. Girl, I'm just like you, you know, budgeting, um, binge watching TV shows, problems with my kids, you know what I'm saying, everyday life. I ain't got nobody doing shit for me but myself and my husband. So I just don't like when people refer me to as Oh my God, you're a celebrity to me. Because celebrities, they some people just think of them as like the most, I don't know, you know what I'm saying? To me, a celebrity is a person because they bleed the same. Bitch, you go to sleep the same. You might sleep in a nicer bed than me or a nicer hell, a nicer, you know what I'm saying, home to me. Or you might even have somebody bring you bed and breakfast. But I'm just April. But I am kind of like, I. it's not that I don't, like to be around people because I do. I'm an introverted person. I just like to be to myself a lot. Not even to myself, but more or less to my family. Um, because I've had, you know, I don't have friends and you guys already know this. I don't, I don't have any friends and I'm lying because I do have my bestie, Rebecca, and I do have my bestie, Love Kisses. You know what I'm saying? So those are my friends. And if I'm leaving, and, and my bestie, Shay, you know what I'm saying? I have three friends, three female friends. And no, we don't talk every day, and that's fine with me because I'm not the type of person that wants to be on the phone all the time or talk to you every day because give me a chance to be able to share something with you, you know what I'm saying? So I don't really do the phone thing every day, but those are my friends, and they're very near and dear to my heart. But, oh, I get so irritated with my lashes because I'm very, my eyes are, um, I have hooded eyelids, and this one is the worst, so I always have to do my lashes different and shit. And this eye always seems like it comes out better. But anyway, you know, so I don't really do the social thing, like, in person. I do social media because that's what I do for a living, and that's what I enjoy to do. And I think it has a lot to do with the fact that I'm able to voice my opinions and stuff to you guys 
online. That's just me. But a lot of times, like, with Priscilla's issue, she feels socially awkward. She's She feels like she's lived the lifespan of a 50-year-old, okay? And she feels like she has no friends, and she doesn't have a boyfriend. She hasn't been celibate, but she hasn't. she's been single for the past three years, okay? And she basically has no one to talk to. She's had family issues, and, you know... Let me tell y'all about family, okay? And I don't even think I need to tell y'all about family because I'm pretty sure y'all bitches are very aware of how family can do. Family could be the one that drag you to the bottom of the motherfucking ocean and fucking leave your ass there with an anchor on your ankles to fucking drown and die. Me and my husband had this conversation the other day about family. And it's unfortunate because family would be the ones that will do you in the most because they feel like they're family that it's not going to bother you. Or because they feel like they're family, it's okay. You know what I'm saying? It's not okay if you borrow money from family and you never return it. That shit ain't okay. You know what I'm saying? That shit is in no way, shape, or form okay. Bottom line. But family can be the ones to do you in a lot of time. So I think with me, that is the issue. Like, I don't really fuck with my family too much, except for my immediate family, which is my mom, my sister, my father, my brother. Not my brothers, but the only the one. Because I told you guys before, my gay brother, we don't speak. He don't like me, and that's good, because I don't give two fucks. He doesn't like me because I'm very opinionated. But listen, in case you guys don't know, you cannot be gay, be have been possessed by a demon, and be a fucking psychic reader. Where does that work out in the real world? Okay. Yeah. So you tell me that you're gay. I'm cool with that. Maybe we could share some outfits. I don't know. Makeup, whatever. He doesn't dress gay. He just he's just a guy. He just dresses as a guy. But you know what I'm saying? But then when you start telling me shit about how you possessed and, you know, how you could read people's minds and you could tell, you know, shit like that. It's like, so you're a possessed psychic, you're a possessed psychic homosexual. First of all, I don't know about being gay, but I do know that this, it is kind of hard for the gay community, all right? Because there are assholes in the world who are still against gays. Like, get over it already. Fucking get over it. All right? And I know y'all like, why, bitches, you doing your eyebrows if you're not doing no makeup today? I don't even know. But there are... There, the, the, the gay community still has it tough because there are still assholes out there who are racist against the gay community, which is unfortunate. So to me, it's like you already got a hard enough time being gay. Why the fuck is you going to sit there and tell me that you are a psychic and you've been possessed? Damn. Whew. So we don't speak to each other. And on top of that, he's disrespectful to my father, and I'm not having it, okay? You ain't about to tell me you're going to beat my father up. I'll fucking kill you. So, you know, he don't like me because, you know, well, my dad said he don't like me. He don't want to speak to me no more because I'm too aggressive and I'm a bully. But you ain't about to be fucking telling me what you gonna do to my dad. Crazy. I fucking cut your throat. But anyway, I wouldn't literally cut his throat, but I beat the shit out of his his little gay ass. Anyway, and I'm not against gay people because I say that, but I'm just saying I will beat the shit out of his gay ass, okay? So with that being said, you know, I just basically stick to family. And a lot of time, family can do you in. There was a prime example of how my brother feels towards my father. He blames him for being gay. Nah, nigga, you just motherfucking gay. And ain't nothing wrong with that. Stop fucking faking the funk and just be who the fuck you are. If you gay and you happy, then be motherfucking gay and happy. Shit, ain't nobody knocking you. But don't go blaming somebody else for you being gay. Anyway, like I said, family is the ones who will do you in all the time. And it's unfortunate because the key word is family. But those be the motherfuckers that'll be ready to slice your motherfucking hand off and then use you for something else. Let me tell you. Everybody go through shit, Priscilla, in life. This is where I'm going to give you tough love because it seems like you're just kicking yourself in the ass. And on top of that, you might just want a pity party. I don't know. But I'm just telling you this because, listen, 
People tell you to get over, get off that hump. I'm telling you, get off that hump about your family. Stop letting other people tear you down and letting the things that you don't have in life tear you down. As long as you sit around and complain about it and mope about the shit, then it's not going to happen for you. You're going to continuously not have friends. You're going to continuously not have a boyfriend. If you sit around and walk around moping with a mean resting bitch face, ain't nobody going to want to approach you. You know what I'm saying? Who want to approach somebody who got a resting bitch face and look mean all the time? You kind of look like, oh, okay, she's kind of intimidating. But here's the thing. The number one key to this, it starts from within here. You got to build yourself up, girl. You got to love yourself. As long as you allow this foolishness, like not having friends, nobody liking your motherfucking pictures on social media, then you're going to just drag yourself down and you're not going to be happy. I cannot stand to see people get mad about not getting likes in, on their posts. Get over it, motherfuckers. You're not entitled to a like. You're, who said in the real world that we have to like anything that you put on social media? Take me, for example. There's plenty of people that don't fucking like me. Do you think I give two fucks about that? I could care less if you don't like this motherfucking video, the one from yesterday, the one from the next day. I don't care. You know what I'm saying? So when I don't get all the likes on a picture or all the likes on a video, I don't give two fucks. Because at the end of the day, I'm going to still do me and I'm going to still fucking breathe. And y'all motherfuckers is still going to look at the picture or the video for the next time. And there's going to be some motherfucking petty ass person who always likes to thumbs the video down within five seconds of it being uploaded. I know who you are, bitch. Keep it up. Um, but I don't really know who you are, but you're subscribed to me, so you're doing it to just be fucking stupid. And I don't care. You know what I'm saying? So it's shit like this, Priscilla, that's just bringing you down. A lot, You know, the thing with social media is people feel like they need to be validated. And this is just exactly what Priscilla said in her email. She feels like she needs to be validated. Well, honey, won't you validate your own motherfucking self? Let's let's start with validating ourselves, okay? And stop worrying about others who need to validate us. Stop worrying about why nobody likes me, why nobody hits me up, why nobody calls me, et cetera, et cetera. These are the things that you should stop worrying about because it's really not that motherfucking poor. It's not. It's, it's, it's really not that motherfucking important about being validated on social media. This is the problem with you young people these days. Y'all feel like y'all have to be validated. Y'all feel like y'all are entitled to shit. Y'all feel like, oh, I'm going to need this. This is what, this is me. This is, oh, why ain't nobody like my picture? Oh, oh wah, 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 wah. nobody likes me. It's not even that, okay? It's not even that. This is social media. Everybody's on social media. People, I look at pictures on social media, on Instagram. I don't even like them, meaning I don't put a heart. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I leave a comment, sometimes I don't. It's very rare for me to always leave a comment on anyone's picture. I see it and I keep scrolling. You know what I'm saying? I don't take the time out to be like, oh, I like your shirt. or I don't, I don't know. I just don't do that. But then there are some posts that I really will make it my business to leave a comment and shit. Not saying that I shouldn't and not saying that I should, but here's the thing. I'm not going to allow social media to run my motherfucking life. That I'm not going to do. You know what I'm saying? If nobody didn't comment on none of my videos, hey, you know what I'm saying? It's all good. Y'all still love me just the same as I still love you guys. You know what I mean? No big deal. You know what I'm saying? No big deal. But let me tell you, the, the, the shit starts from at home, meaning even though you've had a rough childhood, okay, who hasn't? I grew up in the projects, you know what I'm saying? My mom was a single mother, you know, she didn't really know how to be, um, like, warm and inviting to me as a mom. Like, she would say mean things to me as a parent, and then she did this quite often. And I, But you know something? I didn't allow that shit to, to drag me and tear me down for the rest of my life. That's one thing I didn't allow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, my mom might have said some mean things to me. Whose parent doesn't say mean shit to them? But I didn't allow it to drag me down, and I didn't allow it to just make me a less of a person. I just dealt with it, and I continued on with my life. And, and later on in life, I did tell my mom, yo, I didn't like that shit. I didn't say it in those words, but I let her know what you said to me was very not was very hurtful, and I didn't like it. And that hurt me as a kid. And she apologized, but she knew that she wasn't affecting me. It didn't, it didn't, I didn't allow it to affect me. And this is the thing with people. They, they take little things, and some things maybe not so little, okay? But listen, 
you have to let go of shit sometimes, okay? Because if you don't let go of shit, that shit will eat you the fuck alive. Like, straight up, no chaser. If you allow shit to consume you, it will motherfucking consume you. And what's going to happen is... You just gonna deteriorate inside, like Priscilla is doing. She twenty one years old, talking about she feel like she's lived her life as a fifty year old. Sweetheart, you have yet to motherfucking live, okay? So don't go comparing your life to being fifty years old, cause I'm damn near fifty. I'm forty five years old, and you ain't never lived your life like how I. You am. have not lived your life like a fifty year old. You twenty one years old. My son is twenty one years old. You know what I'm saying? He he might not have did everything that a twenty one year old has done, but Who's to say at 21 you gotta have a you supposed to have a boyfriend or you supposed to have kids or you supposed to have certain things? When that's not that's not where written in stone that these things are supposed to come to you at this age. You know what I'm saying? Now I am sorry for you because she did lose her mom in 2015, so that is hard. That is a struggle. You know what I'm saying? And she had a miscarriage in 2017. Now, for the miscarriage, maybe you should want to go get yourself checked out for those reasons because I've had um, three of them. And, you know what I'm saying? Mine's were for fibroids and and endometriosis. So maybe you would want to get that checked because you are a black woman and they're really high. Fibroids is, you know, well well known in, like, browner skinned women. You know, not just black women, but darker women. So I would... That's the one thing I would get myself checked out for. But the first thing that I would do, sweetheart, is love myself. You think that your mom, who's up in heaven, really want to look down at you and look at her daughter and say, why is Priscilla doing this to herself? Why is you kicking yourself down? You're not making shit no better for yourself because you, you the one who is giving toxic shit to yourself, not people that ain't your friends or people that didn't talk to you in high school. You're 21 years old. You're not in high school no more. Let's get over that shit and move forward. It's not written in stone that you got to have friends. It's not written in stone that you got to be on social media. It's not written in stone that you got to have likes, okay? What's the first thing to the key to making success in life and being successful is loving yourself and getting yourself off of that low pedestal and getting on a higher one. Let's be real. As long as you continuously, Priscilla, kick yourself down, bitch, you are not going to go anywhere but down. You know what I'm saying? You 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 giving yourself this little woo woo. I'm sad attitude. Oh, have pity for me. And I'm not saying I'm not coming at you being mean. This is me being tough love, like you one of my motherfucking kids. Cause you you the age of one of my kids. This is me telling you. Listen, I'm gonna just pretend like I'm talking to my son right now. Let you let you know. First of all, social media ain't for everybody. Second of all, social media don't need to validate you. What the fuck you care if somebody like or dislike your motherfucking picture? Do you really know these people in real life? And on top of that, you worried about even when you post a picture, you don't get no likes or you don't even get the creeps in your DMs messaging you? First of all, let's let's talk about DMs, all right? Who gives a fuck about direct messages? A lot of times, some of the creeps are in the direct messages. I get DMs, and do you know what I do? I block a motherfucker. You don't want DMs from creeps in your fucking deep mess in your message. You don't even listen. Let's be realistic. When you meet somebody online, it's a ninety percent chance that it's not going to work out. Okay, I'm sorry, but me personally, if it were me, I would rather meet the person in face to face, out in the open, in the real world, not through social media. All that social media shit. That shit is so hyped the fuck up. People could tell you whatever the fuck it is you want to hear or whatever they want to tell you. So somebody DMs you and he's telling you, "Oh, ma, you look good." I'm saying, you know, what? Who? Who cares? Who, who fucking cares? Sweetheart, you ain't the only one that he done fucking DM'd. If he DM'd you, what makes you think he didn't DM her, her or me or somebody else? Let's let's be for real. So DMs from fucking niggas in your Instagram, please. That shit is mad lame. Nobody gives two fucks, two fucks about that, okay? That shit is massively lame, massively lame. Not mad lame, but massively lame, okay? As well as that. So you have a resting bitch face. I'm sorry, but I don't know really what a resting bitch face is. I've heard it's just a face that, you know, you just look mean or whatever. I've been told that all my life. Why don't you smile? You're walking around looking mean. It's just my face. What do you want me to do? You want me to walk around like... Then you'll say I'm fucking rec- I'm crazy. So it, it, you know what it is? People are never happy. You know what I'm saying? Like, you could be the best person in the world, and you could have cured, you have, you could have cured AIDS, you could have stopped world hunger, 
You could have made real peace. You could have made sure that nobody goes hungry, nobody's homeless, and somebody's still going to have something to say about you negative. Like, it could have been from 10, 20 years ago. Yeah, she used to be a drug addict. She used to be a crackhead. Oh, yeah, Muffin is my lover. Yeah, she used to go in the store and steal wigs. Now she just, she saved world hunger and world peace. So, you know what I'm saying? It's I don't steal wigs, but I'm just saying. I'm just using an example. But it's like, regardless of what the fuck you do, people are going to talk about you. You ain't never going to be right for nobody. People are always going to have a complaint. Just like you, Priscilla, you complaining about not having a boyfriend. You've had boyfriends, but you kept them until you found out they were no good. Okay, so you did the right thing. Because who the fuck want to be with a boyfriend that ain't about shit? Is it that important in real life? Let's, let's be real. Is it that motherfucking important that we have to have a man or a girlfriend? People. It's not that important. Like, life goes on. If you ain't got no man, okay, then that means that one day, eventually, one will come along for you. But let's just get this out the box. You can't sit back and not do nothing about it. So you ain't got friends. I ain't neither. Like that. You think I'm worried about it like that? Not at all. Not at all. However, you think that, do you really honestly, Priscilla, think that a friend is going to come? Knocking on your motherfucking door. You think that somebody going to come knocking on your door, say, hey, can we be friends? Or send you a message. Hey, I know I'm in your DMs, but I really like your eyeshadow and I would like to be your friend today. Can we be friends? Don't work like that. You have to start a strike a conversation with people sometimes in life. This is how you become social. This is how you become non-awkwardly social, like you put it. Let me tell you. Everything ain't for motherfucking everybody. Social media ain't for everybody, okay? There are millions of people who post pictures. I have followers that I follow. I follow my subscribers that subscribe to me on social media, and I I go and I see their pictures, and I like them. You know what I'm saying? I like them. They, they leave me comments, and I comment back. But they have, like, maybe, like, they, you ain't the only, listen, bitch, you ain't the only motherfucker who got pictures up that probably got, like, two or three likes. You're not. You're not. But what does it matter? You do things. This is this is what I just. Oh, my face looks so fat. This is what I don't get with people. Don't do shit for other people to be validated. Do shit for you. Like, you know what I'm saying? When I post my shit up, I do that shit for me. I don't give a fuck if y'all don't like the picture of me with my ass out, even though I ain't got no picture with my ass out. I'm just saying. I'm just using that as an example. But I wouldn't care. I did it for me, all right? I wouldn't care if you didn't like the picture of me and my grandson post up because you wanted to see a wig picture. I don't care. This ain't about you. This is about me and him and this motherfucking picture. Bitch, if you don't like it, then bye. The shit, when I post up my wigs for sale, this it's about me and it's about you. So, see, we got two things. I'm posting up because I have gotten requests. And I'm posting up because, excuse me, I need to get rid of these motherfucking wigs. I got one head and they start looking the same, okay? And on top of that, I don't need all of this shit in my life and in my house. So, granted, some people will be like, girl, I'll keep every last wig. Trust me when I tell you, you don't. I don't. I don't need all of it. I don't. I have my likes and I have my faves and I'm good, all right? And other than that, I'll keep it pushing. But I don't do shit for everybody. I don't. I don't need to be validated. Because like I said, bitch, if you don't like me, you don't motherfucking like me. If you do, then thank you. We could be cool. But if you don't care for me, then hey, the next person will or maybe not. But on top of that, bitch, get in line. Get in line if you don't like me. I could care less. But this is what I'm trying to get you to understand, Priscilla. The number one thing... To being successful in life. And when I say successful, bitch, I'm not talking about, oh, making money. I'm talking about life in general. Every fucking thing. The number one thing to being successful is loving yourself. Okay? And some people might say, April, you always say that. But it's the truth. You know what I'm saying? It's the truth. If you don't love yourself then you will allow any and everybody to walk over you, take advantage of you, use you, non-love you. You can be in a relationship with somebody who don't get two fucks about it, you, because you love them more than they even care for you. You know what I'm saying? Oh, my face looks really fat. Oh, my God. See? And this is, the, look, here I am. I'm worried about my weight. 
in my face being fat. At first, I was really disgusted with myself yesterday, and I was crying about it. And I was like, oh, I did all that hard work, and now I didn't gain some weight back, and blah, blah, blah. That's how I started feeling. I'm letting people down. Because I started feeling like, oh, people are going to say, April, you gained your weight back, blah, blah, blah. Then I started saying to myself, so fucking what if somebody says that shit? You know what I'm saying? Okay, so what? I have gained a few pounds back. Oh, well, so what? Bitch, I'm happy. I got a man. Do you have one? Okay. But on top of that, we have to stop kicking ourselves down. And that's the one thing that my husband taught me yesterday. That we as people have to stop knocking ourselves down and change. If there's something about yourself that you don't like, then what you think is going to change itself, you have to change it. You have to do something about it. If you don't have friends, Priscilla, then what do you have to do? You have to go out there and make friends. Don't think that just because you're Priscilla that everybody got to come up to you. If people think that you got a resting bitch face, then they might find you to be intimidating. You have to show them otherwise. If you have a job, try to talk to people at your job. Converse with them. Me, I'm the biggest on telling you, don't, like, a job is a job. It's for work, not for making friends. But at least be cordial. Be social. So that way you'll be able to open up when you get out of work and be able to talk to people. Stop sitting at home not doing anything with yourself because you don't have friends or a man. It doesn't work like that. You got to get out and do things for Priscilla. Oh, they got, they got balls in these things now for this elf like us. Hey, okay? You have to do shit that makes you happy. Not wait around for some motherfucker to come in the picture and say, you know what, girl? I'm going to take you out tonight because you so fucking cute. And I think you are amazing. Plus, I like your eyeshadow. No, no one's going to do that, sweetheart. You have to make your own way. You have to do things that make Priscilla happy. And sweetheart, let me tell you this. As long as you stay in the house and be a hermit, you know what a hermit is, right? As long as you stay in the house and be a hermit, honey, you're going to stay in the house and be a hermit. You're not going to be successful. And being successful, like I said, is not just about making money. It's about being happy, being successful with your life with who you are. Now, granted, Priscilla, she's had family problems. Let me tell you about family problems. We all have family issues. Nobody's family is 100% perfect. Okay? And on top of that, like I said, family is the ones that do you in. Sometimes, as a person, you have to walk away from the negativity, from the toxic shit, regardless of who it is. It could be your mother, it could be your brother, it could be your sister, your auntie, your uncle, your cousins. It could be anyone. If it's your family, you still have to walk away from them sometimes. Because like I said, family can do you in. And family can bring you at your lowest point in life. And a lot of time as people, we allow others to bring us down. We allow others to steal our joy. You know what I'm saying? I have said to myself yesterday, I said this to my daughter, Nay. I told her, I'm not about to let nobody steal my joy. Anyone. Because life is too short. And I I said this to her because I had got into an altercation with my daughter, Tati. You know what I'm saying? I had got into an altercation with her. Because I don't like the way you are non-progressing in life, okay? So I had to have a talk with her, and a lot of times what she does is she starts to cry and tear. I'm not even yelling, but she's just really sensitive, and I had to tell her yesterday, I'm not up for the crocodile tears today because I I wasn't. I'm not going to stop what I'm saying because you're tearing. I'm not going to do that. What I have to say to you is positivity and it's going to help you and you're going to listen to this so basically that was that and I had to tell my daughter nay I'm not about to let anyone bring me down steal my joy bring me out of my character and make me stoop lower than what I might feel at the time 
I'm not going to allow this because for one, life is massively short. Whether you think it or not, time goes by just like that. It feels like just yesterday when I was crying about me turning 30 and here it is 15 years later. Those 15 years have went by really quick. On top of that, tomorrow is July 10th. I have been here tomorrow for six years in this same house, in this same state. I have moved and became a resident of Arizona July 10th, 2013, six years ago today, okay? And honestly, it does not even feel like six years ago. It doesn't. It doesn't seem longer. But it damn sure don't seem as long as six years. That's because time is go just goes, it goes, it goes. And I realized, like, you know, as I got older, I realized I don't need a lot to make me happy. I don't need to wake up and go on my social media and be like, oh, y'all, somebody like that shit and, or check my view count and see how many views I got on my videos. You know, I used to worry about shit like that, and it used to bother me and shit, you know, but it is what it is. You either going to watch or you're not going to watch. That's not going to deter me or stop me from doing what I enjoy doing, so I'm just going to continuously do it. And if you don't watch my video, then hey, bitch, don't motherfucking watch the shit. But I, I stopped worrying about the little minimal things, like, oh, not having friends, or, oh... You know what I'm saying? Not getting so many views. You know what I'm saying? Oh, not having the newest car. Oh, not having some edges, okay? Like thicker edges. You know, I have come to terms with it. Not saying that I'm defeated and not saying I bow down to the shit, but I have come to accept the things in my life that this is what it is. And if I want to succeed and be happier, then I myself have to do something about it, okay? So, what did I do for my videos? I stopped worrying about people. Stopped worrying about people watching or not watching. Because I'm just going to be April. And the best thing for me to do is be who the fuck I am, myself, okay? I'm not going to worry about what people think of me. You know, I'm going to worry to a certain degree. But I shouldn't even really have to worry that much. Because I don't really do chaotic, idiotic shit to where I'm going to go viral for dumb shit, okay? Um, you know, as far as my edges, I have used products to help them grow back, and they might have grown back minimal on this, only this side, and they haven't. But you know what? Not saying that I'm going to give up, but I'm not going to worry myself to in the grave about the shit no more. You know what I'm saying? I'm just going to accept the fact that this is my hair for right now, and I'm going to make the best of it, but I'm going to also try my damnedest to improve it. You know what I mean? As for not having friends, well... With that being said, I, I have my friends, you know what I'm saying? I have made my friends back. And, I mean, three friends for me is enough. I don't really need a lot of friends, you know what I'm saying? My bestest, 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 bestest friend in the world is my husband. So, you know, I'm not saying that he's all I need because it's always cool to have a girlfriend, hang out with her and do girl things. But my husband does stuff that I like, so I'm not really too concerned about that. You know what I'm saying? Oh, that freckle always makes my eye line look thick right there. But the first thing to, to, to build your self-confidence up is to fucking build the shit up on your own, bitch. Stop worrying about everybody. Like, this is the problem with the world. Y'all stay worrying about social media, who like your picture, who don't like your picture, who want to be your friend, why you ain't got no boyfriend. Like, come on, girls. Do you really think, like, that's all there is to life? You guys get so hung up. You young people get so hung up on this social media shit. Just the other day, my husband had to tell my son to chill. He on fucking social media because somebody done trolled him and said something about his, I don't know, it was his outfit or something. I don't know what the post was, but basically the person disliked it or said something smart on Twitter. Now, I don't really go on Twitter because it's just it's confusing sometimes to me. 
But the person didn't like it or whatever or whatever. I don't know. But so my son goes and trolls his page and just keeps waiting. Like, who does that? What the fuck do you care if somebody don't like your outfit? Bitch, eat a dick, okay? I don't give a shit if you don't like my outfit. Get over it. Get over yourself. Those, it seems like the people that always have something negative to say about someone else is just, the, they're just negative and miserable people in general. And their whole accomplishment in life sometimes is to make other people miserable. But you know something, Priscilla? You know, this to me, for me, is just tough love because I'm not about to woo-woo you and pity you and tell you, oh, we'll go out there, you'll find some friends, girl, boo-woo-woo. I'm not going to do that because it sounds pathetic for me to do that. And on top of that, it's not real. Listen, let me tell you something to get off your ass and stop sitting around not having no friends and crying about the shit because as long as you sit there and cry about the shit you ain't gonna accomplish shit bitch okay you ain't gonna make no friends you ain't gonna have no boyfriend and ain't nobody gonna dm you who gets and, and on top of that you don't even want nobody dming you let's let's let me just be real with you bitch you're not gonna want nobody dming you listen you have to make a life for yourself grow up honey grow up Everybody has issues with family. Nobody's family is perfect. We're not going to let that deter us. We're not going to let that get us down. We're not going to let that fucking stagnate us, hold us back, and stop us from accomplishing things that we want to do. You're 21 years old. You have a long road ahead of you. And if you're going to lay down now and cry about it, sweetheart, you're just going to make your life a whole lot easier. You're 21, which means you're legal, which means you can go out to a bar, to a club and have a drink on your own and socialize with people. That's what you do when you grown. But at this age, this day and age and your age, you laying down and crying about that shit right now, sweetheart, and you're only 21. I can only imagine how rough and tough it's going to be for you when you're 30 or something. You know what I'm saying? You are driving your own self into a depression, which is unfortunate because of the way you're thinking. The first thing that we need to start with is self-love, not self-hate, because you are making your own life toxic from all of this freaking social media validation and foolishness that you feel the need to validate, which is not important. You gonna wake up tomorrow and breathe. Social media is not gonna put a roof over your head. Social media is not gonna put clothes on your back and food in your mouth. It's not gonna do none of that. I mean, it does it for some people because that's their job, but it's not your job. Your job is to make sure that Priscilla is doing well and that she's doing her job. Stop worrying about what other people think. Stop worrying about what you ain't got and what others got. You gotta stop worrying about that because that's the problem. See, that's where the problem was with me i had to i kept oh well she got the same wig video she ain't even got as many subscribers as me she got my views man, 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 man. this is the dumb shit that i used to worry about now i could care less if the bitch got the same outfit on as me with the wig bitch go ahead with that i don't care you know what i'm saying it's not that i don't care but i'm not gonna let that little bit of shit consume me and bother me to the point where i have been depressed and don't want to do nothing with my life no i have moved past that and moved forward and realized that you know what this non-existent or this non-important shit that I'm letting consume my mind is not even important. And why am I allowing it to consume me? You feel me? I got other shit to worry about in life. Just like you, Priscilla, you got other shit to worry about in life, which is self-love. And it seems like to me like you really don't have any of that because you're so worried about DMs and creeps DMing you and not DMing you and making friends. And like, God damn, there's so much more to worry about in life versus that shit. Like, that would be the last thing on my mind. Let me tell you something. It was nice being single. Being single is not a bad thing, girl. Trust me when I tell you. It's not. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you might not get some dick all the time or whatever. You might not get dick at all. But you know what? You got these motherfuckers. These motherfuckers will allow you to be able to reach all types of adventures and journeys. Damn, I got the glue all over. Unimaginable. And, and you know what's so cool about these sometimes? Touching yourself. Bitch, you ain't got to tell a motherfucker to get off you and go home. I'm just saying. Not that I feel that way, because I don't. But when I didn't have any man and I didn't get any dick, girl, clap on. Clap the fuck off, bitch. I got D's, okay? And I ain't worried about all that extra shit. You know, I don't I don't let the littlest things consume me because it seems like these little things are consuming you, which is unfortunate. And I feel like right now, Priscilla, this is the time to grow up and be an adult. Okay. 
Blank, blank, period. I had said this to my son one time. You know, people, there are a lot of people, and I made the word up because I didn't know, but I, it just sounded like it went. I was like, yeah, these motherfuckers on social media, they so, these young kids, they're all on social media, they think they know everything, they think they so grown. They ain't grown, they ungrown. They ungrown. That's my new word, ungrown, okay? Y'all young people sometimes be acting so motherfucking ungrown. Y'all grown people sometimes be acting so motherfucking ungrown. Okay, we all have our times when we ungrown and shit, but it's the time to be grown, grow the fuck up and mature, mature Priscilla and stop worrying about the littlest things. Okay, the littlest things. Rest in bitch face. Listen, sometimes we all have rest in bitch face. Nobody wants to walk around with a big ass smile on their face looking crazy. Okay, but sometimes we do need to smile because smiling is healthy and it makes you happy. And as long as you smiling and you got those good vibes going, then all the negative shit around you, you're not going to let it consume me or consume you because I said me. But as long as you allow the negative shit that you have complained about in your email to me, such as, uh, let's see here, not having friends not, you know, being social awkward. She says, but I do love holding deep conversations depending on the subject. How do you feel about this? I need some help. So she did say she loves holding deep conversations depending on the subject. That's fine. Let me tell you something, Priscilla. My kids say I talk a lot because I'll go into the stores, Walmart, Target, whatever, and I could be in a lane with somebody with the same aisle lane. I said aisle lane, whatever. And we looking at something in particular. Or I might talk aloud and then that person starts engaging to, with me. And we are engaging. I'm engaging in a full-blown conversation with a stranger. And I've gotten two women's phone numbers like that. Not like not to date, bitches, not to date, but just to be friends. I didn't ever call them, okay, because... I already have friends, and I just, I'm a very sometimey person. Sometimes I want to be your friend, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I want to be bothered, sometimes I don't. Not that I don't want to be your friend, but I just don't, sometimes I don't want to be bothered, okay? And that's fine, because I have a lot of shit to do. But, you know what I'm saying? I be having full-blown conversations with total strangers. Me and this one lady, we was in Burlington Coat Factory, and I had a comforter that was the new one on my bed, $29. She had this ugly comforter. It wasn't ugly to her, but, but it was to me. And it was forty some dollars. She was like, "How did you find that one for twenty nine? And I told her it was right here. And, I, and then she was telling me that she was trying to match it up because her husband, with her room and her furniture. And she was telling me how she had got her furniture from American Furniture Warehouse. And I was telling her, I was like, "That's funny because we just had the furniture delivered from there two days ago." And she was like, "You did?" And I was like, "Yeah." She said, "What did you get?" And I explained it to her. Then I said, "Well, you know what? I have a picture. I have a picture of it on my phone." So I showed her the picture. And funny thing is. She had the exact same bedroom set as me. She had hers for five years. She showed me a picture of hers. And I was like, wow. So we just started talking. We was in the line, the lane, the aisle for 30 minutes, okay, talking. She started telling me her husband was a police officer. And she had got this bedspread, this comforter set. It was really girly looking. And I was like, I don't think your husband's going to like that. You know, I was being honest with her because he's a man. So I said, you should find something that's, in, you know, neutral for both of you guys. And so I started helping her find a comforter set, and then she loved it. And we, you know, we kept talking to one another. And then my husband came in the lane or the aisle or whatever. And then I was like, babe, she had the same furniture. And she showed him the pictures. He was like, really, what do you think of it? How, how long did you have it? Does it last? Blah, blah, blah. You see what I'm saying? We had this full-blown conversation with somebody we didn't even know. We didn't exchange phone numbers. But we had a full-blown conversation, and I'm pretty sure if she wanted to be friends or if I wanted to be friends, we could have. We exchanged names and everything. So I like to have full-blown conversations with people, too, uh, with strangers, okay? However, you have to pick and choose who you have full-blown conversations with. Because sometimes strangers can be a little bit weird, okay? But Priscilla, the thing, what I'm trying to get you to understand is stop waiting for other people to approach you and DM you. You got to be yourself, honey. If you see a nigga in the street and he looking good, sweetheart, hey, how you doing? Holler at the motherfucker. If you see a female at your job you want to be friends with, holler at them. Stop being shy. Stop waiting for other people to fucking approach you. And stop feeling like you're socially awkward and this is how you have to perform in life. Stop beating yourself down, girl. For real. On that note, I got to go. Got to bring my daughter to her job. You know, I love you guys. Give Priscilla some, you know, well loved advice. But I got to go. So make sure you rate, comment, subscribe. Bye.